coming up on Unpacked. I don't remember a time we were not part of the mission church. In movies, they would censor the part that speaks to sex. She then pronounced that I will be expelled. If their parents take them in, they will no longer be accepted mm. as church member. I went home to the village and not to my, to my family. A church mission and a mission school with a dark side. Today's guest is here to share her story. Let's unpack. At 10 years old, Elimpilo Malinga was sent to the mission school that belonged to the church that her family was a part of. What she expected to be a sacred space of security and love in KZN turned out to be a place that would not only turn her world around, but break her family too. This is part one of her story. Let's unpack. Salimpilo, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm excited to be here. Your family many years ago when you were younger, um, you know, I'd love for you to share the circumstances that you were living in before your family joined the church. When I opened my eyes um, as a baby, as a child, my family was already members of a, of a church. Mm. So I don't remember a time we did not have a church to go to. Mm. But when um, we, we, were, we were an ordinary family, we, we were not well off, but we were from a rural family. Mm. Uh, my, my mom and dad um, farmed land. So they, 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 they grew plants. They sold what they, what they had in excess. And we had enough. Mm. And this and was in case it in. It is in case it in. Mm. They, they were part of a, of a church um, from, as, from as, as little as I, I, I can actually remember. Um, yeah. So I've always been a church girl. Mm. And what was the family structure at the time? It was mom and dad. It was my siblings. I am the second of the six siblings. Mm, mm, they mm. had five girls and, and one boy who came after me. Mm. He's since gone to be with the Lord as well. He died in 1991. There was a very tragic story on its own. Mm. So how did uh, he... Well, with the extended family as well. Sorry. Oh, okay. So you also live with the extended family. How did you um, lose your brother? It was in a car accident. Um, mm. it, it's a story that links to, 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 to the family as it, were, it, as it was at the time. It was mm. linked to the church. He was expelled, just like me, from, mm. from, from school and started working in the taxi industry, first as a car washer, then as, as a conductor. But he then mixed with people. And so on this particular day, he wasn't driving. He was in a van that carried um, crates of, 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 of beer. And he was standing at the back. Mm. And the car was racing. Um, and they lost control. And he died in that accident. He mm. actually flew and, and, and dropped in front of the car as it stopped mm. and hit his head. And broke his spine, and, and, and that was the end of him. I'm sorry for your loss. It's one that doesn't... They say time heals all wounds, but mm. yeah, this one just is one that is very hard. But mm. we live on. So how far back can you remember that you were part of uh, the, the Mission Church? I don't remember a time we were not part of the mission church. Mm. The only difference is location mm. um, because it had branches in different areas. Mm. So we were part of a branch in Tugela Ferry. But from time to time, we would then be bused or taken to, 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 to the big meetings, um, mm. like the youth meetings and, and, and. But for as long as I, I think... All of my life, I was mm. just born into it. 
Mm. And before your family uh, was actually living there, uh, it, it was life just uh, seemingly normal for you? Life was very much normal for us um, at home. Mm. But even in us moving to the mission, my parents remained in the homestead. Mm. So it was just the children that were taken to the mission. And why was that decision made? It was made because we were supposed to be protected from being corrupted because the government was, was about to introduce um, sex education in schools. Mm. So that was not... The church advocates for purity and holiness mm. um, in living as a young person, even as an adult person. Mm. But um, primarily sex before marriage was a big thing. So now if that is becoming a subject in school, then that becomes a, a serious issue for the parents. Because now how are you going to control the narrative at home mm. if the teachers are teaching sex education. And what, I mean, what I year was that? Tell, well, it would have been 1985 mm. because we were then sent to school in, 1990, in 1986. Okay. So you were saying you remember? I, I remember back then when they would um, talk about the importance of, of, of living a pure life mm. as, 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 a, as a child. And I remember when we were in school, finally, when we got to school, how taboo it was for them to be talking about just reproductive um, biology mm. or the, the science of reproduction. Mm. But even in, in, in movies that we would watch, they would censor the part that speaks to sex, even as much as kissing. Mm. So it, it was, I think it would have been hard for our parents to, to navigate through all of that. So I'm assuming then that means all of the kids, uh, all six of you were sent to the school. Well, the others were still young and, and they were not school of, of a school going age. So it was my, my sister, my elder sister, who's since passed on, mm. myself and my brother who has since departed as well. Mm. And so, then the others joined in a bit later mm. as they became school going age. What were your first impressions from what you can remember of the school? Mm. Was I excited? It was a beautiful setting. Mm. In as much as I was a rural child, but I've always loved finer things in life. Mm. So I guess it, I, I related to what I saw. The setup is, the place is nested in a, in a valley. Um, and the architecture is, 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 was then rendezvous, all um, set up in rows. Mm. Um, they had lots of flowers, little gardens uh, along the roots. Um, there was just peace and tranquility uh, about the place. Mm. Um, but I think what was most impressive for me was seeing white people who could, who could speak in a Sizulu. And now I'm going to be part of this community. It was, it was a dream that I never had, actually, because I didn't know anything like that existed. Mm. And it's interesting that you were in school, in an interracial school, uh, still during the apartheid regime. That on its own. Well, I didn't know what apartheid was. Remember, okay, you wouldn't know this, but in the rural areas, we didn't have TV. Mm. All we had access to was radio, but even radio was not allowed. So at home, we did not have a radio. Mm. Um, of late, the, 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 the believers or the brethren who go to the same church now have the luxury of having a TV or a radio. Mm. But back then, even if you had the radio, it really was to, 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 to speak to the news, if you wanted to listen to the news, but the rest you couldn't listen to. I remember for the first time when I heard um, the black box, the music, the, 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 they were blaring some, some song. I can't remember. I can't remember what, what song it was. Fantasy. It was so tantalizing. Fantasy, yes. Yes, fantasy. It was so tantalizing. Mm. And I related immediately to it. But 
I then had to quickly remember that this is circular music. It is nothing that I am supposed to be enjoying. Mm, mm. Because that is how we were socialized. We could not listen to radio. We, we didn't own a TV set, but we didn't have electricity in any case. Mm. So the world at the mission and the world at home were two different worlds. Hmm. So am I excited to be in another world that is totally different from the world I just kind of came from? Hmm. Yes. So talk to us about what day-to-day life was like at that school, which you started attending still in primary. It's a long story, but let me just try and shorten it. So in the first year, 1986, the whole idea was really not to go to school, but the whole idea was to rescue us from a world, a big, bad, bad world that was, was unfolding in front of our parents. So the school came about, I don't know, it wasn't by design though. It, it, I think it came about by default because now you had a bunch of children that were running around and you needed to find an activity for them. So our very first classrooms, I remember, somewhere under the, 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 the trees, somewhere in old buses, somewhere in, 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 in class, well, not classrooms, but in rooms where they, they, they had not found use for, such, for, for, for those rooms. So in essence, the school was not by design. It came because they, they wanted to find an activity for us. Mm. So when, when it all started, it started, no one knew where it was going. Mm. Nobody had an idea where it was going. We didn't know what their idea was, but it was just nice to wake up. Um, you have a scheduled bath time where you will go to bath at a certain time. After that, you go for breakfast. After that, you go to a service. After a service, you go to eat. So your life was was planned out. You didn't have to think about what you were going to do. Your life was planned out. Your meal times were were already planned. Mm -hmm. And you needed to confess your sins. And that was almost as as a routine as well. Mm -hmm. And then school started. Then you had homework to do. Then you had school activities to do. Then you had... Um, extracurricular activities to do. Some of us were, were, in fact, all of us were singing because we belong to a church. So there's no way you're not going to learn to sing. Mm. And so we became a school that sang very well. Mm. Um, And then we started sporting activities. Um, We ran, we started forming. So on a day-to-day basis, you knew that today is a Monday. So today is a music day. So Mm. my, my day is going to be wake up, breakfast, school, lunch, sports, I mean, um, music, study. um, Then it's going to be supper, then study, then go to sleep. Mm. So your day is full. Mm. Um, Your laundry is taken care of by by, by, by the the workers at the mission. Mm. And so your day is full. So it, it is nice. And then it starts to be routine. And then... You start to see things that don't really make much sense. It's only in hindsight that you start to say, oh, so when that happened, Mm. it was starting to speak to a pattern that is to follow. Mm. For instance, all of these kids that I'm talking about were black kids. Mm. And the white kids who were also part of the church, because the the, the church is is, is a multiracial church, Mm. Um, they still went to a school in Stenga. Mm. So they, didn't, they were not part of the, the, the school that we had just formed. Mm. Well, then it would be a year or so later that they then joined the school. Mm. But even when they joined the school, they didn't sleep in the dormitories like us. Mm. They slept with their parents in the rondavals that they would be given as a, as a family. Mm. And they would be kept as a family. But we would live in the dormitory with other black kids. Mm. We were told we were told that we needed to cut our hair, um, but the black the, the white girls would not cut their hair. So it's only later that you're starting to pick up that ah uh, uh, but 
even though we go to the same church and we were said to be, I don't know if it was never said that we are equal, but you would assume that we are equal. We eat in the same hall. We 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 queue up for the same food, um, in some instances, but not as as the scholars. The scholars, um, the the children who who came to school later on, they still ate with their parents in the dining hall, mm. and we would eat alone. Mm. So it is only afterwards that you start to see. Okay, there were differences, and sometimes we pick them up those differences. Uh, the, the issue of hair became such an issue mm. um, that the black students raised it as an issue. So when you say cut your hair, are you talking like a cheese scope, clean cut, or are you talking just very short? I am talking a certain length that I can't actually... I would have to cut my hair to show you what mm. that looks like, but it is not... It is not a clean-shaven head mm. um, that was not allowed, but it was also not a, a stylish kind of mm. cut. In most instances, it would just be a pair of scissors. In fact, if you, if you were a delinquent and didn't want to actually cut your hair, they would just take a pair of scissors and just cut you. Mm. The point was for you not to look pretty, because if you look pretty, you are a distraction to men. Mm, mm, mm. So, yeah, the men, was, the men were protected mm. um, at the expense of girls looking their fine selves. When did you start now noticing any sinister behavior within the church? Because you've already mentioned how the different races were treated, but um, how or, or how did sinister behavior or when did, did it start entering into this picture? I, I did not I did not pick up sinister behavior until I left the mission or until the reason I left the mission myself. <clears throat> because <clears throat> when I left the mission, actually not I didn't leave voluntarily, I was expelled. Mm. Um, when I was ex okay. Prior to me being expelled, there were other people that had been expelled before me. They would, be, they would the, the most reason people would be expelled was because of relationships between girls and boys. And they would be expelled because that was not encouraged or that was just prohibited. So in this case, I received a chocolate from a guy who was older Mm. who sang in the choir. So if he sings in a choir, he is, he is right spiritually. So I, I don't have to be worried about him making moves at me. But unfortunately for me, although he sang in, the, in that particular choir, when he gave me a chocolate, that was a pass on his part. Mm. And he wanted me. But he never said anything to me. I received the chocolate and I moved on. After that, I was called. But, and but, I was told but that wasn't that against the rules? Because as far as I understand, one of the rules was that, were that you were not allowed to talk to boys at all. But he's not a boy. He is a man. Mm. So he was, okay. so, so the rules were you're not allowed to talk to boys, but this is a man. So in your view, you weren't doing anything wrong. Exactly. Okay. Let me take you a little bit back again. Mm. We are encouraged to confess our sins. Mm. And some of the people we confess our sins to are men, mm. are older men in the church. So, okay, there's a hierarchy. There is um, the founder of the church, mm. and then there is um, people called the co-workers, mm. So these are the, the co-workers, these are the people we go to confess our sins to. Mm. It's a combination of men, 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 men and women. Mm. Now, then there's a second layer, which is the choir number two. So mm. choir number one is the co-workers. Choir number two are people who are almost ready to get into the work. Mm. So to, there are people in a... In a, in a, in a in a simpler term, these are people that are in training to be abefundisi, to mm. be 
ministers of the word. So the person who gives me a chocolate is in this layer, the second layer of people who are almost ready to get into ministry. Mm. They are almost ready to start preaching the word of God. They are almost ready to start traveling the world with the founder of the, of the mission. So I, I saw nothing wrong with receiving a chocolate from him. The one thing I knew, he was not a boy, he was a man. But just that on its own got me in trouble because um, by answering like that, I, I was showing, okay, the term that was used was, was that I was rebellious mm. and I was chatting back to the elders and I was a clever devil. That, yeah, that's the word they used. I'm a clever, they are not here to educate clever devils. Mm. So if I feel like I am in the position to be telling them how they are supposed to um, see through, uh, see me through this case, because I went as far as saying to them, you have not called this guy to answer for himself as to why he gave me the chocolate, mm. but you are asking me why he gave me the chocolate. Mm. All I know is I received the chocolate. The intentions of him giving the chocolate, I do not know. Mm. So all of those answers were not answers that they were expecting from me as a child. Mm. But I knew that if I don't speak up, I'm going to be expelled. I'm going to be excommunicated. I am going to be thrown out of home because it is something that has happened to other people before me. So this, this fate is about to befall me. So I might as well just put it out there that I did not have a relationship with this guy. But if you want to find out, you can also call him in. Can I pause you for a second there? Just to be clear, how old were you at the time that this incident happened? I just turned 15. So you just turned 15 and a grown man is the one that gave you a chocolate. Gave me a chocolate. Okay. And the relationship to him, okay, the story behind him giving me a chocolate. My father was not learned. Mm. He worked in one of the shops. Mm. And this guy worked in one of the shops where my father worked. My father worked for a, a family that was part of the mission, the elite family in the, in the mission mm. that owned... Um, I think they owned a spa. And so my father worked in that spa with that guy. Mm-hmm. So my father would have remarked about things I do at, at school. And so the guy took interest. Okay, maybe not interest. I don't know. But he knew I was the daughter to his colleague mm. who worked with him. And so at the back of my mind, I knew that he worked with my dad as well. So Honestly, what could have gone wrong? Mm, he, mm. He's, a, he's a grown-up man. He knows my father. He sings in, in the choir number two. So what can go wrong? Mm. So when I received the chocolate, I didn't receive it and, and think about it. I received it as I would have received it from my, my own counselor, mm. who I confessed my sins to. Mm. So there was nothing sinister mm. for me. I, I think what I was trying to point out is maybe in hindsight is the fact that there's a grown man that is showing interest in a young girl. Showing interest? I don't know. Okay. No. I don't think he was showing interest. I think he was just liking a colleague's child. Okay. Okay. So now, how did the this, this school find out about this chocolate incident? It was in public. It was in a public space, mm. a, a place called the waiting room. Mm. So it was just before supper. Before, I mean, every meal time, a bell would be rung. Mm. So one of the teachers, in fact, he, he was my math teacher. He was ringing the bell. Mm. Um, and he, he, he went past us standing Con, 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 having a conversation. I think by now I would have received the, the, the chocolate or I was receiving the chocolate, but he saw the whole thing unfold. Mm. And so he went past. I received the chocolate and I proceeded to the school hall where I was going to have um, a supper. Mm. 
I remember distinctly that day we were having um, amasi. We were eating amasi and and bread. So I I took my bowl of amasi and I sat down. Hardly a minute, someone walked in and asked me to go to the waiting room. Mm. And so if you are called to the waiting room, you must already know that something in that particular day did not unfold in the way it should Mm. have. But in my head, nothing said it was the chocolate incident. I thought maybe someone had confessed and my name had come up. um, And so that is why maybe I'm being called. Mm. But no, that was not the case. The case was I had received a chocolate. So when I walked into the waiting room, there were the three men um, who then asked me what had happened. And I told them, including my math teacher was seated there. And I told them what had happened. And then they said they had a recorded tape of what had unfolded. Mm. Okay, okay. Even at 15, I was not that dumb. Mm. I'm thinking, why would there have been a tape? Did mm. he have a tape? Was, was he setting a trap for me? Mm. But I'm sitting here, this thing happened like 40, 30, 45 minutes ago. So I can still remember word for word of what we, with the conversation, how the conversation unfolded. And I said, okay, if you have a tape, you can play the tape. Mm. So I'm challenging them in mm. their view I am challenging them and I don't have any authority or rights to challenge them. Mm. And so that on its own was just unheard of. Um, So the conversation continued that the tape would not be brought out. And then I said, look, I think you need to call him so that he can answer for himself because you keep asking me um, something I can't answer. Why Mm. would he have given me a chocolate if we are not in a relationship? Mm. I don't know. Mm. So that's a question he can answer because maybe I received the chocolate and I did not know his intention. And yet his intention was for us to be in a relationship. Mm. As much as I don't know what happens in a relationship, but I do know that a relationship between a boy and a girl is not right. So I would not have done it. Mm. And I know it has been a cause for most people and most students to leave the mission and and, Mm. and be excommunicated from church and expelled from school and disowned by family. So why would I want that to happen with me? Mm. I certainly didn't want that to happen with me. But if he had those intentions, then I needed to know that he had those intentions, but I did not know about them. Mm. Well, that all went south. I never saw him. He never came to answer. I was then sent to to, um, the second layer. So the second layer of authority within the mission. Mm. And she then pronounced that I will be expelled. My parents will be called and they will come and take me home. But then there was a a rule that was written somewhere that if you are expelled from school, the church will excommunicate you, Mm. your family will disown you. Mm. So even if my parents do come, they have only come to collect what is theirs. They've come to collect the clothes. They've come to collect whatever money I have, Mm. um, just so that they make sure that I leave only with the clothes on my back. Mm. And that's that. So that would be the day we last saw each other on on that particular day of Mm. school. It was during small break. I think it was around 11 when I made my final goodbyes. But no one is allowed to say goodbye to me anyway as well. Mm. So we're looking at each other, teary with the people that I was fond uh, of. Mm. So they're standing in corners and and they're bidding me farewell, unspoken farewell of goodbyes. But I'm rushing to get out of the mission because I'm thinking to myself, if I get out of the mission before my dad does, when when they find me outside the mission, they're going to give me a lift home. Mm. I also, I was banking on the fact that I thought I, thought I was my father's favorite. Mm. Oh, I thought my dad and I got along. But that didn't happen. When, when they finally drove out, I saw the car coming and I stopped thinking they're going to stop as well. And then they drove past. Mm. And they drove past. 
and they, until they were out of you. And that is how our last day happened. And how, how did that feel to you, the realization that, you know, you've been excommunicated, your parents came to take their things and you're just alone? I was angry, but at the same time, there was, there was something inside of me that said, I wanted to prove that the mission was, was, was not always right. The mission had mistakes. Mm. And this particular time, the, mis- the mission had made a mistake in mm. my case. Mm. And they had not given me the right of reply. Mm. And, and they had robbed my parents of, of an opportunity to just raise their kid. Mm. And so I was really livid. I was angry. I was hurt. I was... But one thing I knew for sure was that I was not going to go back to the mission and beg them. Mm. I, the, the day was, I mean, the light was almost, um, the sun was almost setting, but I knew I wasn't going to go back to Asizabandu. And I knew I didn't have money to, to catch a taxi to, to Gela Ferry. I would rather have been eaten by wild animals than go back to Asizabandu. That's how angry I was. But God being faithful, God being good, I was preserved. Some guys from um, not very far from the mission, there was a tuck shop. Um, they worked in that tuck shop and they did deliveries. So when they saw me sitting under the tree from about 12 till late in the afternoon, they stopped. I think it was their last delivery. They stopped to ask me why I was sitting there. And I told them that I didn't have money to get home. I was, but I wasn't going to say that I came from Gwasizaband because who was going to believe me that I come from Gwasizaband? So I lied about some aunt. I, I, I was a little Cinderella. So my aunt was abusing me. I, I read the Cinderella story. Mm. So my aunt was abusing me and I was running away from an abusive aunt and I'm trying to get home, but I don't have money to get home. So they kept me for the night. They gave me their bed. Um, and then the following morning, they told me to leave before dawn mm. because the employer would not be impressed to see a girl in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the building. Mm. So before dawn, I was back on the street, sitting there. And a guy who had seen me the day before going to and fro, he then stopped. His name was, I I can't remember his name, but I just remember that his surname was Mkwanazi. Mm. He stopped and he asked me, why am I still sitting here? And I told him the similar story. He gave me a lift and gave me a 10 rands to get home. That was enough to get home at the time. So he drove me to Greytown from Kranskop um, to Greytown. Mm. And from Greytown, I had 10 rings mm. to get to my, my final destination. Thank God so for in, him. In He's your since mind, on. In your mind, when you say you were going home, in your mind, were you still trying to go to your parents' house? I don't know anywhere else. My dad had actually said um, that... If we meet anywhere in the world, I must not even call him my father. So, oh, in so my that's, mind, that's how much they had cut you off. He said that to yes. you at the school. Yes. Mm. So in my mind, I am going home. I am going, I am going to the village mm. where my extended family is because I can't go to my father. That's mm. what he has said and he meant it. Mm. And so... I had given him the benefits of the doubt that if he comes out of the mission and finds me on the street, he's going to pick me up. So the final straw was when he didn't pick me up, Mm. then I knew that he meant what he said. So I'm not going home, but I'm going to the village where Mm. I have an extended family, where I can then go and say, auntie so-and-so, I don't have a place to sleep. Can I sleep here? Auntie so-and-so, can I please get food? Mm. Can I have clothes? You know, so that's what I did. But in arriving... In the same homestead, I was not able... Well, I I went to my aunt's aunt's house for two days. I think the third day, my father found out that I'd finally um, arrived at her house. Mm. And he came to have a serious um, talk with my aunt. Mm. 
And I realized that that was putting tensions between the two of them. So I left the house, my, my aunt's house. My, my, my next stop was another extended family. Mm. We called her an aunt as well. Um, I slept there for the night. So each night I would try and find some house to sleep to mm. and then go to another. But I thought this was going to be not so much of a of a life. I mean, I can I can see my 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 house. Mm-hmm. I see people from 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 home every day because it's such a small town. Everyone knows each other in mm-hmm. this in in this place. So everybody's asking, "Why you my Kaya? Why don't you go home?" Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking to myself, "How do I go home when my father told me distinctly that he didn't want me to come home?" Mm-hmm. And I knew that it had happened to other families that. When someone is expelled and they leave the mission, if their parents take them in, the the parents are violating their, okay, I I don't know what you call it, but the rules. They will no longer be accepted Mm. as church members. They will no longer be accepted. And and acceptance in that church was important. Mm. People wanted to belong to the church. It, it was a prestigious church. I don't know what was with the church, but just just being a member of that church was prestigious. So if your child does something that the church doesn't agree with, um, and you obviously are standing with your child, then all of you must leave the church. It was just that automatic. Hmm. So some parents would not want to leave the church. Like my parents didn't want to leave the church because somehow they believed that I was in the wrong. Hmm. Whether they believed it or not, or they couldn't prove it, I don't know. But I went home to the village and not to my, to my family. Next time on Unpacked, was there some sort of virginity testing that would happen at the school? The, the white children would not be... I was expelled from home Mm. and I didn't have a relationship with my parents. Was there any kind Um, of sexual abuse that was happening at the church? This was not heard of, but there were strangers who became family along the way. much for watching Unpacked with Rilip Khile Mamoja. Make sure you subscribe to my channel where you can get to watch more episodes. But more importantly, you can be part of our online community. Comment down below, share with us who you'd like to see on the show, what story you'd like us to discuss. We love engaging with you. Keep it coming and don't forget to subscribe.